All right, guys, before we get started, I wanted to thank our sponsors at the Saturday Conversation. DJ Caveman, DJ Iron Monkey, great job as always. Their podcast drops every single Saturday. Make sure to check it out. Thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Daryl had me out this week at the track. I am still recovering, and I am looking forward to returning the favor. So both DJ Caveman and DJ Iron Monkey will be participating in a Tumble Kai class and hopefully signing up, and I'll be seeing you guys on a regular. Also, our good friends at The Gathering of Styles, Sensei Eric Caldera, Great job as always. Eric is like a, the principal to the Gathering of Styles. There's so many of us instructors. Sometimes we go, don't get a chance to keep up with each other, but give Eric a call. He'll let you know everybody's doing because he does a great job of keeping in contact. Everybody volunteers their time. Everybody's really supportive. I look forward to seeing these guys every single time. Clarence, especially you, and Rena, you guys are great. Teddy Jordan, awesome. Master Apollo's a part of it. Uh, Roberto Torres, David James. There's just so many of us. And we're definitely going to make sure that we keep uh, affecting young people in a positive way and giving them a voice. I'm also going to be releasing reviews on certain products that I personally use. The first product I think I'm going to be reviewing is going to be Tuhan Apollo's Tribunal Life. It's something that I've learned to use during some of the seminars that I've participated with him. And uh, part of the tutorial is going to be why I'm adding it to the curriculum of the Kung Tao Jiu Jitsu that I teach. I'm also going to be releasing product review videos. The reviews are going to be on products that I personally use in my daily life in my recovery from uh, my tumor and the training that I'm doing now. So it'll be from minerals to vitamins to weapons that I'm using and uniforms. So I'm looking forward to that. Also, I have a seven day video project that I'm going to be releasing as well as a couple of uh, filming projects that we have going on in Framingham, Mass with uh, Grandmaster Craig Seavey. So I'm looking forward to all of this stuff. Got a lot going on. I really hope you guys enjoy the tutorial, and I'll see you soon. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another Tumblekai tutorial. This week's tutorial is going to be on the arm and how to break the arm. So the arm work starts at the top of the shoulder and includes going all the way down to the fingertip or from fingertip to the top of the shoulder. But before we get into the arm structure, I want to get into how something is broken or how you can break something. In order for you to break something, you need two fixed points and a quick way of figuring out how to find the weak point, which is typically in the middle. So if someone was holding up a board for me to break, and I'm sure we've all seen board breaking, and I'm going to do it sideways, right? So I'm going to hold the board and I have equal weight and equal pressure forward. The middle part, or halfway from each uh, fixed point, is the weak point, the center. It's the easiest place to break. So when you understand the structure of the arm, you're basically looking for the weak points in the middle so you can cause the break or the hyperextension, one. The second thing is I never assume a break and I never assume a dislocation uh, or a dislocation. What I assume is pain, discomfort, and a little bit of movement. No matter how, whether you break it or not, or you cause a little bit of pressure on a joint, you're going to get movement, right? So count on that. Everything else is great. So think about it in, that, in terms of that. I'm not going to assume that I'm going to hit you one time and knock you down and knock you out in any situation. I'm assuming that you're going to be willing to stand and work and I'm going to have to work and work. That's why endurance is a component of it in martial arts if you're talking about the duration of a match going on or a situation lasting a very long time. So what we're trying to do is condense it and work. Work on that. All right. So there are two types of joints, ball and socket joints and hinge joints. So we're going to start off with hinge joints. So Lewis is going to grab me, and again, we've already worked off this type of stuff, and you notice I didn't have to bring my hands up. I told him where to grab me. I gave him the opening, I let him turn, and he grabs. So already, I have a sense of his distance, and like we worked on before, timing is now what is essential. I want him, I have to figure out where the fixed points are. You have me here, grab me, make sure. I'm going to, oh, fixed point. His body's affixed to the elbow. So this is a fixed point, this is a fixed point. Halfway is the elbow, hinge joint. How do we affect the hinge joint? I want to get it to hyperextend. Just like you were talking about not hyperextending yourself, in this case, I'm going to hyperextend him. I'm going to make him hyperextend that arm. But before I do that, I want to make sure that I have this arm as straight or as exposed, or better said, as isolated as I can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step back. See how he's, oh, now he's extended. 
How do I break it? With power? It really wouldn't work with power. What I want to do is use speed. I'm going to make sure that this fixed point is fixed, and I'm going to find the tip of your elbow and pop it. I tapped off point and on the other. So I basically uh, uh, straddled that fixed point, and you saw him jump. If I flex my hand in and I attack the joint, it's a completely different reaction. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna get that movement, that pain, but most likely I'm gonna get that hyperextension. So let's do it one more time. He grabs me and I roll a timing. That's the shot. Everything else is after. I'm not really gonna get into all that other stuff, but I want you to see when we're talking about that fake speed stuff. Because all I do is reach for the closest thing to me. Okay? One more time, he grabs me and I go up. Top is the move. Feet. I know that other hand is there. So now, what did I do with my footwork? Footwork is angle four. I'm pulling him off. Now his toe, stay right there. Move your arm. Move your arm. Yeah, get out of here. Stay right there. His chin is past his front foot. That's where I got him when he grabbed me. So that's where I want to take him. One more time. He grabs and I'm pulling. That's the shot. Fix it, hit it. Same time. One. Okay? One. He's going to want to pull that arm or not, but I'm going to ride that movement in. Okay? So one, I can kick and bridge the gap from there. Right? So attacking the hinge joint, grab, extend it, pop it. Right? Work on that. All right. So the second type of joint is a ball and socket joint. It is the basic, it's the same kind of thing, but the joint itself is the weak point. So you have to get the two fixed points to move so you can tear out the ball from the socket. The easiest way to think about it is your chi like chicken wings, when you're ripping the chicken wing out, so you have its normal range of the joints. Then you're going to hyperextend the joint and get that ball to come out of the socket. Okay? So this is usually, the best way to do this one is the, the shoulder. It exists in the hip, we'll save that for another day. But this is the hip, the joint we're going, to, we're going to attack. So again, I'm not going to show you how I'm going to get in right now. I'm just going to show you what I do, what I'm in, right? So I'm going to do circle in first, or excuse me, circle out. So I'm moving circle away from my body, keeping him as tight as I can, coming up and over. So now what I want to do is to make this a shoulder like this, to bring it down. And try to see, I'm affecting him to come towards me. This arm is going out this way, the shoulder is being affected, and that's the pop. So, what I'm following because Robbie's new, this is good for Robbie too, but we'll look, Robbie, relax. When I recover my posture because I don't know who Robbie is, this is where I'm going to do it, and I have my option to look around. So, bring it, let me, let me stick your hand down. I'm going to recover. Pretend Robbie's arm is there, here. This is where you want to be, as tight as you can, and look at my arm. Straight out, not tense out, but straight. You don't want this because this starts collapsing. You want this locked down. It's like when you're giving someone CPR. It's not with your arms, it's with your body and your shoulders, okay? Shoulder dislocation, ball and socket. Work on that. All right, so now that you've had a chance to work on that, let me go back to Ronnie. I'm gonna get my shoulder lock, I'm gonna bring him down, and I'm gonna add my footwork, which is Circular movement, right? So I'm isolating it even further. So this is where my finish starts. Starts, not finishes. So remember, all of these techniques are open-ended. So once you're in, you have a shoulder bar one more time. Add your movement and see what else you find. Decide, assess. Is my opponent still aggressive? Is he yelling that he just wants to get out of there? And I can just push him and we're good? Are we good? Are we? Assess. He's good at situation as well. So we're going to add a couple of shoulder locks and I want to show you transitioning in and out. Work on that. All right, welcome back. So now I want you to show you how to go from one to the other and then I'm going to show you the entry and start from the beginning. So let's go back. We're working halfway. So grab. I have attacked the shoulder, excuse me, the elbow. Now I attack the shoulder. I'm going to add a little bit of movement, and I'm going to hold, assess, okay? One more time. He gives this to me, elbow. Again, this is a mid-movement. 
Man, when we get those 360 cameras, beep, 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 that's going to be dope. As I'm coming in, this is a shout out to Master Apollo. For me, now I'm going into the wall. Okay? So that's transitioning from the elbow to the shoulder. Now I want to show you transitioning from really close to the shoulder to stepping out to the elbow. Touched it, head move. So when I don't touch it, that's what we're working on from there. Okay, one more time. Let's do it from this side. See if we get a better, better angle. No, 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 no. It's one of these situations where the person, you messed up. You let this guy, you put your hand down and you let this guy go in, or you're in mid motion. You're hitting a couple of times. Maybe you do a shoulder, sh uh, a shoulder shot. And look, the hand goes underneath. Look, I start, I turn my hip. And I'm not making a, I feel big circle. My hips are turning and I'm pulling my foot out. That gets me there faster. Okay? Now I have the shoulder, maybe I can dislocate, maybe I can throw. I can also step out, get to the elbow, and attack the elbow. Right, I'm over to the top. See how what he wants to do? Get his arm and come back up. And that's why I'm gonna tag him, head up, head on the feet. Okay, maybe, or maybe not, change it up. But that's what I saw this time. The next time, probably will look the same way. Because that's called evolution. We evolve from technique to technique, from day to day, from week to week, month to month, year to year, hopefully. Okay, work on that. All right, welcome back. So you've had a chance to work on the shoulder, elbow, elbow, shoulder, and transitioning distance from in and out. Let's work on the next one. So now I'm gonna give you the entry. The one entry that we have, that we all have, is technique number one at T1, going to the outside. We're gonna stick with that for a while. It's the safest place to be, and getting here is something that we're all sort of familiar with. Again, we're building a language that we can communicate, right? So let's work on the T1. One is the hip. So if I just square my shoulders, there's my hyperextension if I can get this to be. I'm looking at that, I'm looking at that, I see that other hand. If I need to grab it, I'm not going to grab it, I don't want it. I'm going to go to my shoulder. I want to isolate him more. I want him to take a step and feel a little bit uncomfortable, so I'm going to turn. Now, let's add the final movement, and that's the fingers. I'm going to shoot across, I'm going to shake his hand. Isolate the fingers, one finger, I'm going to curl it in towards me. I'm going to grab it, let's turn it over. I can walk, I'm going to turn Because I have control. So, pull, push. Shoulders to control, still control. Drive to the ground, do whatever you want from there, okay? One more time. This time I'm going to go right to the shoulder. Then draw, break it. Then follow out, break it in control. But you know what? At this point, if that's out and this is out, going out is kind of counterproductive. So I'd rather just go right into my finish. Go talk to the eye if I want to bring them up. If I want to keep them down, and this is a good rule of thumb to keep in mind. If his head is down and he's halfway down to the ground, keep him going that way. Keep it, make it easy on yourself. If his head is back, sweep him back. You can forward sweep, you can hump down sweep. Another little tip when you're working on your extensions, okay? Work on that. So what happens? Me, I'm feeling you back. But when I feel you're not going my direction, I have to have the sensitivity as an instructor to be like, oh, you're going in the wrong direction and do what I just did. But if I'm just going, you go that way, I'm going this way, that's the break. That's exactly what we're talking about. So I'm going to... I want, to, I want to just open your shoulder. I'm not going to do something. If I need you in the gut, boom, what do you think you're starting? This is crunching your wall. So you come forward, look, that isolates the arms. So when I pull it towards me, I break it again. Does that make sense? Do it one more time. I hit the gut in the gut, boom, boom, and I'm done. I pull it right here again. I'm quick on top. Yeah, you're not down, you're not down. That shit look crazy. It doesn't matter. That shit look You know, I, I recorded all that shit. Oh! Ah, you motherfucker.